This video is going to walk you through creating a custom post type and then creating custom fields for that custom post type. So with Toolset installed, I am going to go to Toolset here and click on Post Types. Now when this loads, you're going to see the post types that are already in WordPress being Media, Pages, and Posts. Now we want to add a new one called, let me click Add New, we're going to call this Products. So when this loads, it says Name Plural. So I'm going to type Products, and then the singular version of Products is Product. And then the slug. Now, a lot of times you'd want to keep the slug the same. Uh, we're going for some SEO value here, so I'm actually going to call this low dash carb. You can also have a custom icon. Let me just pick one just to show you. Uh, I'm dealing with products here, so I wonder what looks like a product. Let me scroll. Uh -huh -huh. I don't know what it is. How about I don't see a box or anything. I'm just going to pick an index card just so we can move on, just so you can see. And I like to uncheck the editor and then use and add a custom field for that. So I'm going to uncheck editor. And you can also set where you want this to display in the admin menu position. I like it as close to the top as I can, so I'm actually going to pick WP Engine, and so it should appear right after that. So knowing all that, click on Save Post Type. And then when your product, when your product, when your page loads, you'll see that products is now over here. Now when I go products add new, you expect to see some fields, right? But I haven't added any custom fields yet, so that's why there's nothing there. So I'm going to close this. And now that we have our custom post type in there, now I'm going to go to custom fields on the left. Click on that. And now I need to add a custom field group to the products category. So how we do that, you can actually choose custom fields for post fields, user fields, or term fields. I'm just going to go post fields for right now because that is a custom post products. And clicking on that, I'm going to call that product information. And then click on save. And at that point, whatever custom fields we add here using the add new field button is going to display when we go to add a new product. So I'm going to click on Add New Field. Now, because we're dealing with food here, I'm actually going to follow along with the nutrition label, the standard nutrition label that's on the back of a, uh, a can of soup or something like that. So the start of it is servings per container, and that's going to be a number. Now, I am going to choose number when it's supposed to be a number field, but a few of these fields, I have notes in front of me, by the way, a few of these fields are going to be text fields. So number is going to be servings per container. So I'm just going to type that out here, servings per container. Now, one thing I like to do, and maybe it's just because uh, I'm anal about certain things like this, I don't like dashes, and I like to put the uh, custom post type name in front of it all. So by default, when I type servings per container, it put servings dash per dash container, but I'm actually going to change that to products, product, and I'm going to get rid of all this. I find it easier when dealing with things like conditional logic to not have any dashes or anything like that. And when it has, when you have product in front of it, that way you know when you look at a database that this piece of information has to do with products. So with that, I am going to continue down here. So after servings per container, we have serving size. Now that should not be a number. That should just be a single line. So when I click on single line and serving whoa hit the wrong button serving size let me throw that away hold on serving size and then once again i'm just gonna do that serving size now there are some options here um because this really isn't for a client this is really just for us you could choose things like placeholder value or default value or validation you can make certain fields required but i don't really need that for this particular project so i'm just going to close that up after serving size is total fat so here we go total fat and then i'm just going to do this again and i'm going to keep going down now i'm sure it's going to be repetitive for some of you guys out there watching this but I just want to show you exactly what's going on here. So saturated fat. So 
So I'm just going to keep repeating this process. And the next is trans fat. Cholesterol. And the next one, sodium. And then the next one, total carb. Now carbs, total carbs is actually broken down into a few things. So we have fiber and net carbs and then sugar. And let me just add, so fiber. Yeah, the, I'm just actually looking at a label right now. It's like sugars are actually in, kind of related to, in the same section as carbs. All right, total carbs, fiber. carbs, which that is a calculation of the total carbs minus the fiber. And next would be sugar. And then next is protein. Very important. Proteins. And then next, so here we have some check boxes. So we want to be able to specify when something is vegan or when something is gluten free or uh, dairy free. So instead of number field, now I'm going to add a check box. So here I'm going to type vegan. And so here's something interesting. When you have a checkbox, you know, let's say that you have a form with a checkbox on it. When you, when the person saves that, when a person checks that box and saves it, it right here is asking what value do you want to store? So when it is checked, we are going to have the system store a value of one. And then we have a save option. Then we have let's say that they don't check it, what do you want the value to be? I'm going to check save zero to the database. And that way I can do conditional logic on, let's say that there's an if then statement, you know, if this product has a vegan value of one, then let's say display a vegan uh, logo. Or if there's a, if it's zero, then don't display the vegan logo. So that's how I would set this up one and zero. So that's my vegan one. I'm going to add another one. This is going to be gluten free. And I'm going to save it the same way. And then the next one is keto, keto friendly. And then dairy free. And then we're going to have a high carb one, and I'll explain to you why in just a second. So dairy free, and then save zero. And the last one, well, last checkbox anyway, is going to be high carb. Now you're probably wondering why would you be adding high carb products? Well, on a comparison page, you know, we have a bunch of different products. I want to be able to have use some conditional logic to display a high carb product differently. Let's say it's a red background or a, a red banner or something like that, or an icon that says high carb. And I want to do that so that when you, let's say, see five pizza crusts, you'll be able to sort of mentally know, hey, if I get the standard pizza crust, that's going to give me 100 carbs. Or if I get the lower end one, you know, that's going to be 10. 
just so people have, a, have an idea of what the high carb alternative would be. So in order to do that, I need a checkbox for high carb. So after the high carb things, now we have a note. And the note is going to be like a description, uh, allow us to type some information here. So I am just going to, let's say, a uh, WYSIWYG editor, and we're going to say note. I'm going to call it product note. So here's all my fields. I don't think I forgot anything. I'm just looking at my list. Oh, here's probably one of the most important things, the buy link. Should have done that. So. And that's going to be, let's say, when people want to buy a product, the URL that it goes to. So I'm going to choose the URL field type. And I'm just going to call this buy link. Buy link. Like that'll be the Amazon affiliate link. Buy, buy link. Okay. Now, of course, I can reorder these in any, you know, I can just drag and drop them. Um, I don't want to mess with any of these because these are actually following along the nutrition label. But let's say I wanted a buy link to be up a little bit more. I can just drag it right under protein. Or I can put it in any order I want. But let's say that I'm, I'm good with this. So I'm going to hit save field group. And now I'm going to go back to products and add new. And then I'm going to show you how different it looks. Watch this. Products, add new. I'm going to open a new tab. Now before this was blank, right? Now take a look. We have servings per container, serving size, fat. Here's my check boxes. There's my buy link. And there is my little area for a note. So that is how you add a custom field, uh, a custom post type, and then add the custom fields to that custom post type. So at this point, uh, actually, there might be a few other tweaks I need to do. But for the most part, this is ready to start having information entered into the system.